Electric vehicles smashing through guardrails. Is this a safety concern? Is this due to the vehicle's weight? There's a lot of questions here, and it's a very complicated issue. The University of Nebraska recently released a report detailing the effects of electric vehicles crashing into guardrails. And they showed video of a Rivian R1T truck crashing into a guardrail, and the guardrail was failing in spectacular fashion. One of the things they claimed was electric vehicles are 20% to 50% heavier than standard combustion engine vehicles, and that was the reason for the failure. But this is a complicated issue, and before getting too far to the details of the report and the guardrail, let's talk about guardrails and electric vehicles, their weights, and how those weights compare to combustion engine vehicles. Guardrails aren't meant for a direct impact. A guardrail's job is to deflect a vehicle back onto the roadway, ideally deflecting those vehicles away from another object that could do considerably more damage. When you look into guardrails and the way they're tested and validated, one of the important factors is impact angle. The impact angle is the angle of attack that that vehicle hits these guardrails. Typically, that impact angle is anywhere from 15 to 25 degrees. This is important because when we see the videos later on from the University of Nebraska, I have some concerns with their test setup. And it could be an optical illusion, but we'll hit on that later. But ultimately, a guardrail is not meant for a direct head-on impact. I've seen many cases of cars hitting a guardrail head-on, blowing right through it and hitting something on the other side. You often hear claims that combustion engine vehicles are much lighter than electric vehicles. Some people claim that electric vehicles weigh thousands of pounds more than their combustion engine counterparts. But this is a really difficult thing to kind of gauge. You need a true apples to apples comparison and that's really hard to come by because what vehicles do you compare to link everything up and put them in the same category? One of the vehicles I've recently looked at is the Hyundai Kona. And it makes it a little bit easier because the Hyundai Kona does have an electric version and a combustion engine version. And when you start looking at the weights, it does seem pretty cut and dry. The Hyundai Kona combustion engine version is 3,153 pounds, and the electric version's 3,571 pounds. That's a 418 pound difference, about 13 and a quarter percent. But it's not quite as simple as this. It really depends on vehicle construction. And if they're not taking full advantage of designing the electric architecture versus designing the combustion engine architecture, and you're meeting in the middle, it's difficult to say that there's really an advantage there. Because a lot of the times when you move from combustion to electric, you can lighten up the front end structure. You don't need all that structure to support the engine and the transmission. But when you move from combustion to electric on a, a single platform, a lot of times they're keeping some of those features in there. There's some give and take. Now I put together a comprehensive study comparing combustion engine vehicles to different models of Tesla. I looked at the Tesla Model Y, the Tesla Model S, the Tesla Model 3, and I wanted to see what vehicles would compare to those vehicles. And it's a really difficult area to gather information because what vehicles do you lump together? Sure, I could go out there and I could favor it one way or another, and I could probably make the results look pretty good. I could easily compare a vehicle like a Tesla Model Y to a Toyota Yaris. It wouldn't be a very fair comparison. In fact, when you look at those numbers and compare the two vehicles, it's almost 2,000 pounds. It's an 85% difference in mass. At that point, I could easily claim that electric vehicles are way more heavier than their combustion engine counterparts. And that wouldn't be a very fair comparison, and that's not how I work. So I decided to go to the internet, have somebody else put those lists together. Under the guise of making a purchase, what vehicles compare to these Tesla models? Starting off with the Tesla Model 3, the internet suggested a BMW 3 Series, Audi A4, Mercedes CLA, and a Volvo S60 would all be comparable vehicles. And when you start breaking down the weights of all these vehicles and doing an average between the electric and combustion engine side, you end up with a fairly small difference, 1.75%. The average weight of the Tesla Model 3 is only 68 pounds heavier than the combustion engine vehicles in that same category. With the Model S, I was suggested to look at the BMW 7 Series, the Audi A7, the Mercedes S-Class, and the Volvo S90. And this one was a bit surprising because it flip-flopped on me. It's a 3.73% difference, 
and the combustion engine vehicles were actually 174 pounds heavier than the Tesla Model S. The Tesla Model Y, on the other hand, it went the other way. The forums recommended the BMW X3, the Audi Q3, Mercedes GLA, and the Volvo XC60. That difference was a bit higher at 8.41%, and the Model Y was on average 335 pounds heavier. So when you're looking at the passenger vehicle side of things, electric vehicles aren't significantly heavier. In fact, when you're looking at some of these combustion engine vehicles, they are actually heavier than the Tesla models. Now, everything goes out the window when you start looking at pickup trucks. For this comparison, I'm looking at the Tesla Cybertruck, the Rivian R1T, and the Ford Lightning. And that Rivian is a beast of a truck. On the combustion engine side, I'm comparing the Chevy Silverado, the Dodge Ram 1500, and the Ford F-150. And here, there's a significant difference of 26.25%. The electric vehicles are almost 1,400 pounds heavier than their combustion engine counterparts. And I intentionally left out the electric Hummer because that's a 9,000 pound vehicle. Looking at these crash tests, they are fairly spectacular, especially with the Rivian truck. But let's start with the Model 3. There's a lot of focus on this Rivian truck, but not a lot of focus on the videos from the Model 3. Let's analyze what's going on here. You can see as the Model 3 hits the guardrail, it takes that guardrail, it actually folds it up. The vehicle kind of slides underneath of it. Not something you'd expect from the impact on the guardrail. You would expect the guardrail to actually deflect that vehicle back onto the roadway. And part of what's happening here has to do with the center of gravity. The center of gravity of a standard combustion engine vehicle is a lot higher and more towards the front of that vehicle. That means it's more in line with the guardrail. When you look at a vehicle like a Model 3, most electric vehicles utilizing that universal skateboard design, the center of gravity is quite low, central to the vehicle, because that's where all the mass is, all the weight is in that battery pack. Some of these battery packs weigh 1,000, 1,500 pounds, so there's a lot of weight down low. Now, when it comes to the Rivian R1T pickup truck, that's a little bit different. Yes, the weight is low, it's still central to the vehicle, but that's a heavy vehicle. That's one of the heaviest pickup trucks out there on the road. So, I question, is that really a fair comparison? Would you get the same result if you did the same testing with the F-350, for example, weighing it at 8,000 pounds? I would suspect the answer is yes, it would look very similar. Saying we've got a problem with electric vehicles because this Rivian pickup truck smashed through a guardrail, I don't know if that's a fair comparison. We also talked about the impact angle early on in this video, and I'm really questioning this angle right here. What is this impact angle? The video makes this appear to be almost a head-on collision with this guardrail, which an impact like that would cause most vehicles to blow right through it. This absolutely is an area that we need to study further, and there needs to be a deep dive into electric vehicles really based on that low center of gravity. Again, less the weight, more the location of that center of gravity, and see if our guardrails are currently designed properly to withstand those types of impacts. It's a safety concern, and there's a lot of safety concerns around the Tesla Cybertruck as well. And if you're interested in learning more about what I think on those safety concerns, click this video right here.